Back again, back again, YouTube, and welcome back to the coding workshop. And in today's video, uh, we want to, I'm going to actually go ahead and we're going to be implementing a simple error handling class, which is, which I'm going to use to convert normal PHP errors into exceptions, as exceptions is all I really want, want to be dealing with within this project. Now, this is very simple in PHP, as PHP already provides us with the functions to do that. We're also going to be setting our own exception handler so we can diligently display, display errors according to the actual environment that we're working in. Like for example, if we're working in a develop, development environment, we want to be able to see that exception so we, can, so we can rectify whatever issue might occur. But in a production environment, we want to try and suppress that error because we don't want to show that to our user. I mean, most users probably won't know what it is. but to other users that will be like a lot of information that they can then use to try and attack our website or attack our application so in production we want to actually control what the user can see whilst at the same time trying to log that exception somewhere on our server so we can then see it so that's what today's video is going to be about putting a simple error handling class together which is going to um control all we display errors to the users and to us developer so let's get cracking and let's start with in our project um directory as you might have noticed i've got this error handling directory that's been there since day one so this is the directory that we're going to be working in so i'm going to create the one file that it's going to co contain it's going to be error handling dot php and um, like all files that we've created so far, the process is going to be the same. So it'll be PHP declare strict types equal one namespace magma, and now we're going to reference that error handling directory. All right, it's going to be class, and it's going to be error handling. Now, the two methods that this file is going to contain, they're both static methods, right? And the first one is going to be a straight implementation of how PHP laid it out on their website. So again, we're just going to go with that straight implementation. It'll be public, static, function, but I'm going to call it error handler. And give it a little description. It says error handler mm, convert all errors to exception by throwing an error exception. All right, something generic like that. And if you visit that PHP website, you will notice that um, there's four method, there's four arguments within the method which we are going to implement as well. And the first is severity. Um, second is message. Then we got file and line. Right. So we're going to say if. Um, error reporting and severity this going to return true or just return sorry just just a return then we're going to say throw new error exception right they want to pass those arguments in and the first is going to be the message then the second is going to be zero the third is going to be file, then line. And that is a simple Im implementation of how we're going to convert our errors into exception. So the second method that we're going to create is a exception handler. And what that's going to allow us to do, that's going to allow us to actually display um, exception the way we want it to 
are the way we want it to display. So I'm going to say public static function. It's going to be exception handler, and this takes in one argument, which is the actual exception. All right. So we're going to use HTTP um, response code within our within our project. So we can set response code within our exception and based on the logic that I'm going to do now, um, we're going to actually display the correct template based on that response code. So I'm going to say code equal exception, which is get code. Then I'm going to say if, if code isn't 404, then we want to default to 500, right? So we're going to have templates within our within our view within our view template. I'm going to name them 404 or 500, and that's going to display the actual uh, error that we want to display. And this is going to be based on the exception um, code that we set in our in our actual project. I'm going to use the HTTP response code right here. I'm going to pass that code in just like that. Now, the next part of the code, the next part of what we're going to do now relies on our configuration app file up, which we've not got yet. So I'm going to actually simulate a variable that's going to actually help us switch between um, development and production. So again, it's a temporary variable until we come to create our configuration files. I'm going to come back here and mend this actual variable. But for now, I'm going to call it error. I'm going to set it to true, right? So true means I want to display um, the exception for a developer's environment and set it to false to display errors for a production environment. So I'm going to say if error then I'm going to actually build out what I want the developer to see. And it's not going to be that different from your regular um, exception file, just that we now, got, we now have control of how we want to display that. I'm going to say echo, you say the h1 tag, to say fatal, fatal error. Next line down, the paragraph tag. I'm going to say uncaught exception. Yeah, and I'm going to bring in a PHP function called get class. And what this does, it takes in an argument and basically it tells us what class that um that variable was declared in so i'm going to pass in the exception argument and next line down next paragraph tag we're going to say the message right i'm going to say exception get message just like that semicolon next line down gonna have a next paragraph tag and this is going to contain our trace I want to say stack trace So exception and it's get traced get traced as a string All right semicolon on the last one I'm going to say echo next paragraph tag I'm going to say thrown in get the file that is that the exception was thrown in. Let's 
just go get file. Alright, and I also want to say on line and get that line that, that um, error was thrown on. Say exception get line. And that's it. That's the exception we're going to throw for for um, a developer in a developer's environment. But then we're going to say else if we're not in a developer's environment then we can only be in a production environment and I want to actually display something a little different. But before we do that we need to actually build out something similar to what we've done a minute ago because we want to actually put that into a log that we can store on our server. So I'm going to actually um, create a log file, give it a name, and then log it. I'm going to say error log equal to, I'm going to equal it to a directory in our, in our application, which we have not yet created. I'm going to call this um, log directory right put forward slash and actually want to append the current date and time to this log file so we know exactly when it was logged and at what time so i'm going to say date and say y m d let's capital y MD and also want to log the time so it's gonna be age is something like that again we'll check that and if it's not right we'll come back and fix it and for can fix it I mean then it's going to have a dot text extension because we want want it to be a text file All right then we'll say any set error log to the, our new error login right now we're going to construct the message that we want to log and it's going to be similar to what we've got up here but we're going to store it in a variable and concatenate it along so we're going to say message equal and I can just copy what I've got up here actually let's make it a little bit easier if I just copy this paste it in and get rid of that end bit put a semicolon in the message and you notice that I've started off with message equal then message dot equal so I'm concatenating these strings together now and it's going to be um, with message and I'm going to so exception it's going to be get message and let's put a space right here right I'm going to say message again concatenate line break say so stack trace and put a space say dot exception say so get trace a string all right next one message concatenate next line break thrown in space exception get file and concatenate onto that with a space exception get line and let's put a message in so it's on line with a space All right then I want to say error log or message like so so that's going to log all of this exception to our log file that we've created up here but the user still won't be able to see anything 
So we're going to actually get our 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 base view object and point them to a error file that we're going to create within our application. So I can actually bring in my base view. So I'm going to say use magma base call it base view. Down there, this is where I'm going to actually spit out or echo out that, that error template that we're going to define based on the actual response code. So I'm going to say echo, I'm going to wrap this class in parentheses. I'm going to say new base view and let's call that, let's actually look in our base view. So we want to actually call this method right here, get template. I'm going to say get template. And we want to pass in the path to that template, which is going to be a, a template file within our view templates directory, which is going to be in our applications directory. So we're going to say error because we want that directory to be called error because it's going to contain all of our error files. And I'm going to reference it via the code. So I'm going to say code and say dot html dot twig. And dot html dot twig is how I've been naming it because it's an HTML file that's using twig templating engine. So that's how I've gone about um, using the extension. You can use just twig if you want, but again, it's how I've been using it and that's how I'm going to use it in this. And I'm going to pass in the second argument, which is just going to be optional if we want, which is going to be the error message. And point it to that message variable. Again, we don't have to use this. We stare if we want it to use it, right? So effectively, we should be looking in our error directory, looking at the actual code or the response code that we're trying to pull. And based on that code, it's going to find that file and display that bit of code and display that template to the user or to the end user and that's pretty much all of our error handling it's one file that pretty much does converting of all errors to exception and we're handling that exception or we want to handle it and displaying um, exception based on the environment that we're currently working in again very simple very small class and it's going to actually work well for us. So that's the end of this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, and stay tuned for the next video because that's going to be coming up very shortly as well. 